Hi, my name is Jennifer Hancock. I'm the author of The Bully Vaccine, and this is Why Bullies Bully and What Can Be Done About It. Now, I teach this uh, because we need science on this problem. This is one of those things that, you know, bullying has kind of been going on for a really long time. It'd be nice if we got it to stop. Maybe we could use science to get it to stop. Yeah. Okay, so the science I teach is operant conditioning, which is behavioral psychology. Now, I learned this in college, but I actually learned it in a really interesting way. I was an animal trainer. I was a dolphin trainer at a cognition laboratory, dolphin language cognition laboratory. And I learned not only the, the book knowledge about what had been learned about how behaviors are shaped and learned and unlearned, but also how to actually do it with real live animals. So I know how to extinguish unwanted behaviors uh, using these techniques. I was apprenticed in them. And that's what I'm going to be teaching you in this course, science. It's really good. Jennifer Hancock here. Um, this is Unit 2, Why Bullies Bully and What Can Be Done About It. Now, the, the answer to the question, why is bullies bully, is because it works. Um, it, it works for them. It really, it, and I say that kind of in tongue, tongue in cheek, but the reality is it doesn't really matter why they do it. What matters is how we get them to stop. All right? But it does matter why they do it for social workers. Uh, but to the victims and to the parents of the victims, why someone is behaving inappropriately is completely irrelevant. What matters is they're behaving inappropriately and they need to stop. Right, so for social workers, that's a really interesting question. Maybe the person is uh, being bullied at home. Maybe they're being abused at home. Maybe there's something going on in their life and they feel lack of control. There's any number of reasons why someone might bully. And the answer, but the, 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 at the end of the day, they're bullying because it works in some way for them. Maybe it's giving them control over situations that they don't have in other aspects of their life. Um, maybe it's giving them social status. That happens a lot. A lot of times the bullying is not actually about the victims. It's about other people and the bully is trying to put on a show for other people and the victim just happens to be convenient. So it's really not anything the victim is doing. It has everything to do with the bully and their need for something that they're getting by bullying. Right? And that's really important from a behavioral perspective because in order to get it to stop, we have to remove the reward. So we do need to know how they're being rewarded for the behavior, but first we have to acknowledge they're being rewarded for being bullies. All right. Yes, they might have mental health issues, but a surprising number of bullies actually bully adaptively, meaning they do it because it helps them with social status, it helps them with sense of control, it um, helps them with their peers. So, yeah. They're being rewarded for it. Um, and I don't want to get too much into the science here um, about this, but there, there has been research on bullying, and a lot of it is like, oh, it's adaptive, and it's not because parents are bad, and it's not because um, the school system is failing them or anything like that. It, it really is that kids who bully gets higher social status. Even people in the workplace who bully, they tend to, it tends to work for them. Yeah, there's a cost to pay for bullying. People are afraid of you, um, and you know you can lose social status very, very quickly if you're a bully. But for a lot of them, the, the, the risks are outweighed by the rewards, and that's what we have to be aware of when we, when we want to get things to stop. Right? So if you're interested in the question of why, Evolutionary psychologists have looked into this, um, and yeah, it's adaptive. They're bullying because it works. All right. So what I want you to consider is, um, you know, different people have different temperaments, and some some people are naturally more aggressive, some people are naturally more timid, and it's you know, a kid can learn to be aggressive with their friends, and they get what they want because their friends kind of you know give them what they want when they're aggressive, and then they learn that this works. I can get what I want by being aggressive. Right? That's all it takes. It's really not about bad parenting. It's not about any of the myths about why people bully. It's literally as simple as they are aggressive and it works. They get their way. They get something out of it. And that's why bullies bully. And that's important uh, as we get into the question of, well, how do we make them stop? All right? And we're going to get them to stop using science in the next lesson. Jennifer Hancock again, and this is um, Unit 3, How to Get Bullies to Stop Using Science. 
Now, there's a variety of different scientific lenses we can use to view the phenomenon of bullying. There's, you know, behavioral psychology, regular psychology, psychoanalytics, sociology, economics. There's all different ways we can look at the phenomenon. I happen to like behavioral psychology. And the reason I like looking at bullying through the lens of behavioral psychology is because it not only helps us really clearly see the dynamics that are playing out, but it also provides us with a solution on how to get it to stop. All right, and that's really, really important. Once you understand how, once you're looking at the dynamic, a bullying dynamic as the bully is seeking some sort of reward and they may or may not be getting that reward from the victim, they may be getting it from other people, it, it, it's a lot easier to see the dynamic playing out and also to see why it escalates, like when someone tries to get it to stop, why does it escalate? Behavioral psychology has an answer to that. Um, but it also tells us how to get it to stop. All right? And how you get unwanted behavior to stop using behavioral psychology is to remove, remove the reward. Right? That's how we do it. And there's a technique, it's called extinguishing a behavior, and it really does work. Now, I'm not going to go into the science on this because this is like a short overview program, um, but what you can do is uh, behavior during extinction, operant conditioning, you will find like 800,000 articles going back to the 30s on this, all right? Behavioral psych the neat thing about behavioral psychology is what I'm about to teach you has not been invalidated by any research ever done, all right? Everything points to the same thing, and this is considered established science now, all right? But if you want to look it up, look up extinguishing a behavior or behavior during extinction, and you will find hundreds of thousands of academic articles on Google Scholar to help you understand what it is I'm talking about, all right? So for now, what I want you to understand is that to get a behavior to extinguish, to stop, we have to stop rewarding it. So to do that, we have to understand reinforcements and rewards and scheduling. So I'm going to help you with this. All right, there's three type of reinforcements or rewards, right? There's the positive reinforcement or reward, there's the negative or punishment form of response, and then there's a neutral response where neither negative or positive happens. Right? Now, our understanding of what happens when something positive happens is pretty instinctual. Right? If you have ice cream, it tastes good, you're going to want more ice cream. Right? That's how it works. If something good happens when you do something, you're going to want to do it more. Right? This is why when I say bullying is learned or bullies do it because it works, it means that when they do this, something happens that they like and that makes them do it more. All right. Now, a second way to uh, respond to a behavior, the second thing that can happen is negative or punishment. And that means that you do something and then something bad happens that you don't like. So imagine if you bit into ice cream and you'd had a lick of ice cream and it tasted like dog food. Right? You would never want ice cream again. Right? It, would, it would be horrible. You wouldn't want it again. That's negative or punishment, right? where you do something and the response or the result is negative to you. Right? The third option is that you do something and nothing happens. Right? This is the neutral response. So you have positive responses, negative responses, and neutral responses. Now, we do know that a positive reinforcement is going to reinforce the behavior. What most people don't know, <laughs> but the scientists know, is that negative reinforcement is still reinforcement. And this is one of those counterintuitive things. If you want behavior to stop, punishing it doesn't make it stop. It actually makes the behavior stronger. And that's completely counterintuitive. The only time negative reinforcement works is if it's the very first time you do something. For instance, I have, I've had one hot dog in my life, and I threw up as a seven-year-old, and I've never had hot dogs since. I had a negative experience with my first hot dog, never wanted another one. Can't even get me around the smell of them, right? But I've had really good ice cream my whole life. And when I went to China, I got some really crappy ice cream, but it did not turn me off of ice cream. It actually strengthened my desire to find the good stuff. Right? It's like a junkie looking for a hit. So if the behavior is established and it's been doing going for a while, it's been rewarded for a while, if you start negatively reinforcing or punishing it, what you're doing is actually strengthening the behavior you don't want. 
and that's not what you want to do. You want to get it to stop. Right? So the first thing you need to understand is to get a behavior to stop, you have to remove the reward. And you do that, in most cases, by responding neutrally. Right? We're not going to reward it. We're not going to punish it. We're just going to do nothing. And again, that's really counterintuitive. The idea that you would do nothing and it would work. Uh, is very counterintuitive. But that's this is the advice behind ignore them and they'll go away, right? Is don't reward them, ignore them and they'll go away. Now that the ignore them advice isn't quite right because what you're trying to do is to remove the reward. And you're doing that by responding neutrally. You're not ignoring them, you're responding in a neutral way. And that's a very different concept. Okay. The next thing you need to understand on how to get behaviors to stop is how often you respond to a bully's behavior. So uh, it turns out that variable reinforcement, like sometimes the bully does something and you respond to them and other times you ignore them and then they do something else and you respond to them again, that's called variable. I mean, sometimes you are and sometimes you aren't. That variable reinforcement is going to strengthen the behavior you don't want. And we have decades of research on that. You can type in variable reinforcement behavior extinction and find hundreds of thousands of articles about this in Google Scholar. Right? And every study shows the same thing. Variable reinforcement strengthens the behavior you don't want. What kind of schedule works? Consistent schedule, which means every single time you respond the exact same way. Right? So you want a neutral response. You want to respond in a neutral way. You want to remove the reward. Respond in a neutral way every single time. And that's how you get unwanted behavior to stop. Now, that seems very simple, except that it's not because of what happens next. So let's say you've got a bully who's calling you stinky and you respond to them by saying, thank you very much for that information. It's very helpful. Meaning you acknowledge what they said. You're not ignoring them. You're acknowledging them and basically telling them that they're being an idiot for calling you stinky. Right? And that removes their social reward. And you're not upset, so they haven't managed to make you upset. So again, you've removed that reward. What's going to happen when you do that? Well, anybody who's ever done that will tell you the bully escalates. They get worse. They, they up their ante and up their game and try to get to you and, and insult you more or threaten you or do whatever. That escalation of behavior is predicted to occur. Right? Again, we have decades of research on this. When you remove the reward, on an established pattern of behavior, the animal will respond by increasing their behavior. That's to be expected, and we see that with bullying. They retaliate almost all the time. All right, that's to be expected. Now, what you need to understand is, yeah, it's expected. But how do you ride that out and get to things stopping? Like, if, if doing this makes it worse, why would you do it at all? And the answer is because extinction behavioral extinction is a process it's not a one-time thing you're gonna they're gonna hassle you you're gonna respond neutrally take away the rewards they're gonna escalate you're gonna respond neutrally take away the rewards and continue to not give them their rewards you need to do this every single time and eventually they stop right and if it gets bad enough like if they're threatening you or they're actually engaging in violence not only do you have to respond neutrally but you have to report them because you want to increase the cost associated with them behaving badly, right? I always like to give people, if it's verbal, an opportunity to be nice, but if they don't take it, yeah, report them every single time. The key to this is to do it every single time. Don't let them get away with it even once, because if you sometimes do it and sometimes stop, that's variable and it's actually gonna make things worse for you because what you're doing is interrupting the extinction process and the bully's learning, oh, if I'm just more obnoxious, I get my reward. You don't want them to learn that. You want to learn, you want them to learn it doesn't matter how obnoxious I get, they're not getting their reward. Period. That's what you want them to learn. All right. So what you're looking for is a consistent neutral response every single time. You want to be consistent every single time. And you want to understand that doing this, it's not a one-time thing. You don't report people once and have it done. You have to be consistent about this over time as the other person escalates, which is predicted to occur. You're making them escalate by doing this, which is fine. It's unpleasant, but it's fine. And then eventually, if you're consistent at this, they will stop. How long does it take? It, it depends on how long it's been going on and how consistent you are and whether or not you bring all the resources you can to the table on this. Um, now, I'm going to go more into like 
different scenarios in the next unit, all right, of how this actually works. Um, but for now, if you are a parent, what I want you to understand, and you're watching this, is that your child needs your support over time. You can't just say, oh, tell them to do this, and then assume that the child's fixed the problem. They might actually need your help. They're, they're going to need your help to stick with it over time. They're going to need your help liaisoning with the school if it's bad enough. Um, and if they can't get it resolved, because what ends up happening is the behavior escalates and you need to help your child keep at it and maybe tweak what they're doing so that they keep at it. And some of that is, yes, you reporting to the teacher what's going on or to the administrator what's going on. All right, so your role in this as the parent is to teach this to your kid and to cheer them on and keep on them so that they keep on it. Because the worst thing that could happen is you start this and then you stop and you allow the behavior to escalate, and now you've got a new norm of, of really obnoxious behavior. And we don't want that for the kids. We don't want that for any victim. If they start this, we want them to finish it and get the behavior to stop. And that's what's so hard, all right? So in the next unit, we're gonna talk about specific sorts of examples of how we do this in real life with real bullies. Um, and then if you have any questions, ask them in the discussion forum. Hi, I'm Jennifer Hancock, and in this unit, we're going to talk about specific examples of how you can stop bullying using what I just taught you. All right, so about a lot of bullying is actually verbal, and I don't like the term bullying. Um, it's a general term, and it's about how the victim feels about what's going on. I really prefer that people use, be specific about what's happening. Like, if you tell me you're being bullied, I, I can't really help you. I need to know, is this verbal? Are, is it text messaging? Are they threatening you? Have you been hit? Have your fingers been slammed in a locker? Uh, is, is stuff being stolen from you? Like, I, bullying doesn't tell me that, all right? And in order to come up with a strategy to get it to stop, you need to be specific about what's happening to you. And the other thing that's gonna benefit you by being this specific is that if you go to a teacher and say, Joe is bullying me or Sarah is bullying me, the teacher doesn't know what that means either. All they know is there's some sort of interpersonal dynamic going on that you don't like. Right? That hasn't told them much. If you go to a teacher and say, Sarah called me this name, or Joe threatened me, um, threatened to punch me on the playground, right? that's something your teacher can deal with and take seriously. So try to not use the word bullying to describe bullying situations. Be very specific about the specific behavior that's problematic. Right? And that's going to help you communicate what's going on to your parents, to your teachers, and to everybody else. All right, and it's the same thing with parents. When you go to the school, don't say my kid's being bullied. Say so-and-so did this, and my son did this in response, and this is what the kid did, and um, you know this behavior is inappropriate, because that's what's important. This behavior is inappropriate. This is not about an interpersonal fight. The behavior itself is inappropriate, and you have to label the behavior to make that point. All right, so um, when we think of bullying, we think kind of a continuum of behavior, right? There's harassment, verbal harassment, where someone's maybe calling someone names or they're socially excluding them. Um, but what's going on is verbal, right? Um, if what's happening is verbal, then your response is also verbal. Like, and the exception to that is if it's in the cyber world, all right? So your goal is to remove the reward. And you don't do that by ignoring them. I mean, that's one way to do it. But really, you know, you can't ignore someone if they're in your face on the school bus. You can't ignore them if they're cornering you in the hallway. So what you need is something you can say. So if it's verbal, you can respond verbally. Now, a guy at MIT, Dr. Lieberman, did a study on cyberbullying, and he found that 95% of verbal bullying, or cyberbullying, which is verbal, a form of verbal bullying, it involves words, amounted to six things. Um, your gender, your attractiveness, your intelligence, your ethnicity, your religion. Basically, bullies use bullying to socially isolate people. Right? They make the person be other in whatever way they can make them other. Right? And so you can respond to that knowing that their goal is to you know, show that they can dominate up over you. They, they want to show that they can make you afraid so that they can make other people afraid. And if you're not afraid of them and you respond to them by making eye contact and remaining calm, you've just removed the reward. So if someone says, oh, you're stinky, you say, thank you very much for that information. It's very helpful. And you make eye contact. 
and you wait for them to respond. And if you can't make eye contact, look at their hair, look at their ear, look at their chin, look at their nose. Um, if eye contact is uncomfortable for you, don't look at their eyes, but don't look down. Down is submissive. You don't want to look submissive. You want to look confident. All right. And if you need to practice what you're going to say, practice it before you get to school. Practice, have your parents or friends, you know, say, oh, you're stinky. What do you say? And, and practice it so that it will come out of your mouth when you are stressed. All right. And when you're challenged and that's all you really have to do. It doesn't matter what they say. It doesn't matter how they up the ante. You respond with the same phrase, whatever that phrase is, as long as it's calm, monotone voice, and you make eye contact. Okay. And usually what happens was with they'll, you know, they'll call you stinky, they'll call you something and you say, thank you very much for that information. It's very helpful. And they'll kind of giggle nervously and try it again and try to say something else. And you say, thank you very much for that information. It's very helpful. And they may try it again, but eventually they're going to stop within three or four times. They will stop and they'll, they'll judge you not worthy of their time. That's perfect. You don't want to be worthy of their time. <laughs> That's exactly what you want. Right? Um, so you win. Right? And if they ever do it again, if they try to argue with you, if they try to engage you in an argument, nope, not arguing with them. You just thank you for that information. It's very helpful. And the reason I don't want you to argue is you do not need to defend yourself from accusations that you're stinky or you've got four eyes or whatever it is they're trying to use to socially isolate you with. You don't need to defend yourself. All right. Whatever they're trying to do, they're the ones that are doing something inappropriate, not you. So you just respond. Thank you for that information. It's very, be as sarcastic as you want. All right. Just don't argue with them and don't fight them over this because if they get you to defend yourself and say, well, I'm not stinky. I never pooped my pants. Whatever it is, they've just won. Don't give them that. All right. You, by arguing with them, you validate their premise. Don't do that. Just have something you can say and leave it at that and stare at them and make them disengage. Okay. Now, uh, cyberbullying is the use of electronics to harass someone. And a lot of that is also verbal. It's using text messages and things like that. Now, this is the one case where I say, just ignore it. Don't feed the trolls. Pretend you didn't see it. All right. Because what they're looking for is they're looking to get a response out of you. They're looking for other people to see that they've hit you and to see how you respond to that. By not responding, you remove their reward. And it's very easy to claim you never saw it <laughs> because you might not have seen it right and if you need to block someone block them all right let them let them have a one-sided fight because okay? that's what you're doing verbally when you're in person with them but the more they fight themselves and a non-existent enemy the worse they look and that's what you want so if it's cyber you don't really need to respond to it you might want to take pic uh, screenshots of it and document it but you don't need to respond to anything, anything trollish online. Just don't feed them. All right. That's the ultimate ignore them and they'll go away. Remove the reward. Yeah. You don't need to respond. Okay. Um, another way people get bullied is they're threatened and threats can be explicit, meaning someone says, I'm going to punch you. Um, or it could be implied. They kind of look down on you and say, give me your money. All right. And if you don't, and the impl implication is if you don't, then they're going to hurt you. All right. So any threat uh, in in adult world, we call that assault and it's illegal. Uh, harassment is illegal in the adult world, too. All right. So but if someone's threatening you, take it seriously. All right. And if they're physically intimidating you, you make eye contact with them and say, don't do that. Like if they've hit you, you know, if they nudge you or whatever, not OK. Eye contact, you know, acknowledge it but remove the reward. They're the ones being the jerk and you're just stating a matter of fact. You don't have to argue with them. Just don't do that. Or, you know, I will, you do that again and I'll report you. All right. Or if they're threatening to do something to you, you say, if you do that, I will report you again. It has to be, you need to say this calmly in a kind of robotic monotone voice. You want to remove all emotion from it and state it as fact. And it should be fact because if they do it again, or if they do what they're threatening to do, you should absolutely report them. That's what you're going to do every single time. You're not going to let them get away with it every, any single time because it's consistency 
is going to work. So not only is threatening you not working, you're not giving in to the threat, but they're also going to get in trouble for doing it. Right? So double whammy on them. Right? And that's how you need to respond to those things. And yet you do run the risk of them you know, doing it again or doing what they threaten to do. You know, but you're risking that by not doing anything anyways. Like when has giving in to a threat ever gotten the threat to go away? It never does. It never works in the movie. It doesn't work in real life. Right? You have to confront it and say, don't do that. Or if you do it again, I'm going to report you. And if they do, you report them. You're not threatening them. You're stating a fact. If they do it again, I'm going to report you. And then you report them. All right? You need to document all of this. And I'm going to get into why in a little bit. All right. And it's the same thing if the verbal bullying has been going on for a long, long, long time, document it. Because verbal bullying can be like a lot of little things over time. Document every single thing. Right? Show the pattern of behavior. Now, if you're being physically hurt or someone's stealing from you or they're hitting you, you know, or they're beating you up, whatever it is, that's battery or, you know, theft, right? Depending on what's going on. That's in the adult world, that's criminal. All right, you don't need to tolerate it in school either, right? And the response to that is to make your get yourself someplace safe and report them every single time. These are not things you can report once and be done with it. You have to report every single incident. You have to kind of arrange things so that these people don't have access to hurt you again. And you need to be consistent. All right. Do not be cowered by someone who's trying to use violence to get you to do things that they want you to do. All right. Every time you cower and do what they want you to do, you're giving them the reward and that's strengthening their desire to do it more. You do not get rid of these situations by letting the bully get what they want. All right. You escape and you report every single time to your parents, to the school, whoever will listen, and you document it, every single incident. Who was there? Who witnessed it? Who did what? When did this happen? Where did it happen? Actual intelligence. If you are going to a school and saying, someone's bullying me, and what's really happening is they're punching you in the head on the school bus, like the teachers aren't going to understand that because what bullying manifested itself when I was a kid, not how it manifests now. You need to be specific about what it is you're reporting. So-and-so threatened me. So-and-so bumped into me in the hallway in a threatening way, and I felt insecure. So-and-so punched me in the head and told me whatever they said when they did it, all right? That specific, and I assure you, if you go to a school and say, someone hit me and said this, they're going to take it seriously, where they do not take reports of bullying seriously. Because once you get to battery, you're talking about a criminal act. All right, and it's not that we want kids to go to jail for this, but that's the seriousness with which what is happening is happening. All right, so if it's verbal, you respond verbally. If it's a threat, you say, if you do that or do it again, I'm going to report you, and you do. And if it's violent or physical, you escape and report. All right, now with verbal, you might want to report too if it's habitual. Like once you've given a person an opportunity to stop, every further instance is reported. All right. So, you know, if someone's calling you stinky and you say, thank you for that information, it's very helpful, and they keep doing it, report it. <laughs> Get them to stop. Make them stop by reporting them. Because what you're doing is taking away the reward and increasing the cost. And the two of those things together is what's going to make them stop. And the more consistent you are, at reporting and getting this done, the quicker this whole thing is over, right? If you do it sometimes and don't do it something, you're going to draw this thing out for months. If you are consistent, it's over in a couple weeks, max. Okay. Okay. So report. Let's talk about reporting. Okay. Reporting means um, because what's happening is serious. All right. Um, you need to document. What I want you to report is who said what, when, who it was, what they said, who witnessed it, so that it can be validated by someone else. And report everything. You know, the problem with verbal harassment is it's not like one big thing. It's usually a bunch of things over the course of a day. Right? Document every single one. Right? Because what you're going to use this documentation for is if the person does not stop, you're going to use that documentation to get other people to force them to stop, to get the, the teacher or the school administrators involved and say, this is what I'm being subjected to. 
right? On a daily basis. They're doing this, they're doing this, they're doing this, they're doing this, and then they're doing this, and then at lunch they're doing this, and then after lunch they're doing this, on the playground they're doing this, and right? That pattern of behavior, the, all that stuff, if you're documenting it, you've got a much stronger case for intervention than if you just say, Joe's bullying me, do something about it, <laughs> all right? No one knows what, that, what you mean by that, but when you come in with a documentation log that's really full, they go, oh, there's a real problem here, and that person's the problem. Right? If they're doing all of this to you, they're a problem. And that's what you want when you report. And that's what the documentation log is for. All right? So if it's verbal, verbal response, eye contact. If it's a threat, verbal response. If you do that, I'll report you. Report them. If it's violent or anything um, that's criminal, escape and report. Okay?